All right, let's try to keep this one short and sweet. This one is all about writing a linear equation when you're given a pattern such as this. When you're done watching this video, you'll be able to look at those and write that. That's all we're trying to do here. So, short and sweet is the goal. First of all, we need to uh, make a connection here to what you've already learned. If you're in my class, you are an expert at this by now. And if you're not, I've made a video about this, so you should check it out. But as we've learned in class, if you're going to write an equation from a table, you just start by writing y equals. And then we're looking for how much does y change for each x each means one, right? So for each x that goes by, and we know it's one because they're going up by one, we get five. So we put that answer there. And then we put x to show that it's five for each x because each also means multiply. So that means the uh, rate of change, the movement gets multiplied by x. That's what that means. And then we need to answer the question, what is y when x equals 0? And we put the answer here. Since tables are always x, y, there's x, 0, there's y is 3. The 3 goes there, including whatever sign is with it. In this case, it's positive. And there we go. <clears throat> so the key words here are rate of change. and which is also called slope later on and over here initial value also known as the y-intercept that relates to graphing but we're not doing graphing on this video okay so that's what we've learned before get rid of this red marker now let's relate all that to patterns. <clears throat> Here's how it works. When we're looking at a series of patterns that change and grow, we want to find those two things, right? If, we can, if we're going to write an equation, we need to find the rate of change, and we also need to find the initial value. Once we have those two things, we can easily write the equation. Because that's where those things go, as you just saw when we reviewed a table. So to find the rate of change, we're going to compare this shape to the next one. And I'm just going to color in everything that's new about it, everything that wasn't there before. That's new. When you're done coloring, <coughs> excuse me, when you're done coloring, the things that are left should look exactly like the previous figure. So. Looks like when I color those in, the uncolored ones are the previous figure, right? And we're going to do the same thing to the next figure. We're going to compare it just to the previous one, not to the first one, but to the one before it. What's new about this? We have one more down there, and we have another stack of two over here. So if I want to figure out figure zero here, I want to keep this same pattern going. <clears throat> So as I've been working backwards here, what you notice is there's a one on the end there, and there's one less, then there's one less, so that's going to end up being a new thing. And then these stacks of two keep getting added. So if I color those in, that's a way for me to predict what figure zero is going to look like. It's what's left here. It's what's not colored. So figure zero looks like that. Now we have everything we need. I'm going to do another little color coding here. Okay, My color coding is this. I used red to show the change. And I'm going to use blue. You can use any color you want to. I don't care. The key is that you know what each color means. The blue is the initial value. 
And that means what do I have in figure zero before any change happens, before anything changes, okay? That's also known as the constant. And when we're graphing, later on we relate this to a graph that's going to be called the y-intercept. So that's what y-intercept constant looks like when we're talking about patterns. And the change in a graph is also known as the slope. Okay, so we need to relate it to that vocabulary. And then I'm going to go ahead and just take those first three that were in the original shape all the way through so we can see where they are and then we can see how much things change. <clears throat> oh, I've got caps. Look at this. I've got caps going on all kinds of... Ugh, what a mess. Look at all that. There. Whew, how can I deal with that? Here we go. So since we know the rate of change in the initial value, let's write the equation. It's as easy as that. The rate of change is 3, right? Every time there's three red ones. In fact, I'm going to use red here. And uh, just since I'm doing this color coding, that's the rate of change, which means that's how much y is changing for each x. And then before any change started is the blue up here. So you can see the equation for this series of shapes is 3x plus 3 y equals 3x plus 3. Easy enough. All right. Let's do another one, and then I'll give you a few practice ones, and then this video is over. First of all, remember I'm going to use my blue for the change. Compare the two shapes. Compare that one to that one. And what's new? And what's new? I'm going to color red. Okay? Looks like this one's new. This one had two of them there. This one has four, so those are new. Everything else is the same, right? The stuff I didn't color looks exactly like the one before it. So that's good. Let's continue in this direction. Compare figure two to figure three. What's new? Well, I've got two new ones there, and I've got one new one right there. <clears throat> that's it. So if I'm going to work backwards, we see the pattern going, I'm getting one new one here every time. So that's going to be new when I'm trying to make figure zero. And two, 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 that's going to be new also when I make figure zero. So what I'm left with that's not colored in figure one, that is figure zero. That's how you do these. And then that becomes my initial value, or what I have before the change happens. And as we already talked about, that's the y-intercept or the constant. We're going to be able to freely change all this vocabulary depending on what standard we're working on. And depending on what problem you're getting, different languages used in different states and everything, but it's important to know that they're all asking you to do the same thing. You just have to be able to translate between the different languages. <clears throat> so the equation here, quite simply, will be y equals, get my red pen, how much is it changing? You can see the red is adding 3 every time, which means that's the multiplier, that's the rate of change. That goes there. And then what did I have before I started? Plus 3. And you might go, hey, wait a minute. That's the same as the other one. Same equation, right? But they don't look the same. What's going on here? Well, there's a lot of different ways to represent 3x plus 3. The important thing is that you understand how we got 3x plus 3, which is we've got rate of change for each x. And then we've got the initial value. Okay. Also known as the constant or the y-intercept. Now it's time for you to practice a few on your own. If you need to review that lesson, do it. But here's some practice for you. 
You zoom out so you can capture them both on a screenshot. There we go. Take a screenshot, freeze it, pause the video, whatever you need to do. Do the work. Your goal here is to write the equations. That's all you need to do. So it should be short and sweet. Go for it. Okay, here's how we figure these out. I want figure one to be not colored when I get to figure two. So just one at a time. I'm going to knock some things off of here. There. Would you agree that what I did not color in figure two looks exactly like figure one? I hope so. Okay. Send me a message if I'm wrong. I do make mistakes a lot of times. Okay, now we're going to compare figure two to figure three. That's new. This is new. There's a new one. And there's a new one. So at least this one won't be 3x plus 3 anymore. Now I'm going to take this pattern that I was building going forward. I'm going to take it backwards. So I see I have one extension being added here each time. And I have a block of two going on the top. I have one being added here every time. I have one being added out here every time. And I have a little stack of two being added every time. So I need to take those same things away. And what's left is going to show me what figure one is, or figure zero. There's one, two, three, four, five squares, just in a little row. That's figure zero. Next, I'm using my same color coding I did on the lesson. I'm just going to go quickly here. There's five, five, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. So remember the blue is showing my initial value, the constant the y-intercept, whatever you want to call that. And the red is showing my rate of change. Those are the two things we need to write the equation. So the equation is simply this. y equals rate of change plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, right? 6x. My initial value is 5. That's that equation. Piece of cake. Nice thing about this, once you have the equation, a lot of times on a standardized test, it might ask you uh, how many squares or how many pieces in figure 100, for example. That can take you a long time if you do it the old school way of counting squares, or it can be super quick if you use the equation. So knowledge is power. I'm going to take the equation and go, oh, 6 times 100 plus 5, there will be 605 pieces in figure 100. Just whatever the figure number is, you substitute for x, you get the answer. So much easier than counting or making some huge table. That's ridiculous. Who would want to spend all their time doing that? Go out and hop on your longboard instead. It's way more fun. Here we go. Next one using red for the change. When I'm done coloring, I want figure one to be the only thing that's not colored over here. So I've got that. And three, two, one with a thingy out on the side, that. Okay. Then what's different as I move from figure two to figure three? That. How do I know? Because I should be able to take figure two and put it in here where I did not color. Now if it's following the same pattern, I should be able to work backwards. And what's left when I'm coloring in the change from figure one is the original figure, the initial value, which is figure zero, which is just two little squares. Then I kind of go the other direction, color the squares in, find them in each pattern. And you know, you see these patterns in different forms, especially in standardized tests. It might look like 
popsicle sticks or they might do circles or some other shape but the concept is always the same so don't be scared if you see some kind of weird different shape okay so the equation rate of change looks like five every time five reds every time and my initial value was two that's it okay hey if you want more practice here's a fun way to do it plus this makes sure you really know what you're doing make up your own get out some colored pencils or markers make some shapes uh, use your colors to make sure you're showing a constant rate of change and uh, yeah do it that way or start with an equation and see if you could build a pattern from that there'll be a video about that coming soon that's all thanks for watching and have a fantastic day bye